Hi everyone and welcome from wherever you may be watching from today. My name is Martin McLean. I work for the Windows Server Information Experience team here at Microsoft, specifically around Hyper-V Server. So in a series of Hyper-V videos, I want to talk to you today about Hyper-V architecture, specifically what happens to Windows Server when you install Hyper-V and what different architectural components we install. So these videos are a companion to some new content that we've made available, specifically the Windows Server 2008 R2 Hyper-V Architecture Components poster. Now if you want a copy of this poster, you can download it from the Microsoft Download Center, and the cost is absolutely free. So today, in this first of a series of videos, we'll drill down into the architecture component and have a look at exactly how Hyper-V is architected. So let's install Hyper-V. Now you can do this by going into Server Manager and adding the Hyper-V role. But keep in mind you're also going to need to reboot the server. So it's quite a straightforward operation to install the additional role, but it's going to make some significant changes in the component architecture of the server. So if you take a look over to your right now, you can see the standard architecture mode with all the new Hyper-V components populated in orange. So before we take a look at those in detail, let's first discuss some other important changes we've just introduced, and they're known as Hyper-V partitions. Now if you think about the role of Hyper-V, we actually want to run multiple operating systems as virtual machines, all being hosted on the same physical server. And to do that, we need to isolate those virtual machines from each other, so we introduce this Hyper-V concept of a partition. So just think about a partition as a logical unit of isolation, supported by our hypervisor, in which your operating systems can execute. Now you have to have at least one parent partition, which is also known as the management operating system. Now the parent partition can also create what is known as child partitions, or virtual machines, which host the guest operating systems. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in some depth later in the presentation. If you look at the diagram, you can see the parent partition runs the virtualization stack and it has direct access to the hardware devices. So let's take a look at the hypervisor component first. A lot of people seem to be quite confused by this, but it's just simply a layer of software that sits between the hardware and one or more of the operating systems that we're going to be hosting. Its job is basically to manage those partitions I mentioned earlier, and it controls and arbitrates all of the access to the underlying hardware. Now what's interesting about this component is what happens after we install Hyper-V on our server and we reboot. Because at that point, what we do is we load the hypervisor below the operating system that we've installed in the box. We can now re safely refer to the operating system as the parent partition. This is a very important distinction because the OS is now a very special case of a virtual machine and it has direct access to the hardware. However, having said that, remember that the hypervisor is still in full control of the parent partition. That's an important distinction. So moving upwards, we've also installed what is known as the Virtualization Service Provider, or VSP. Now, the VSP essentially provides synthetic device support to virtual machines over the virtual machine bus. Now, the virtual machine bus, or VM bus, is just a logical interpartition communications channel, essentially the communications pipeline between partitions. Now it stands to reason that if we have a VSP in the parent partition that we would also have a similar synthetic device in the child partition, and we do. It's known as the Virtualization Service Client, or the VSC. Now we've also installed a Hyper-V component known as the Virtual Machine Worker Process, or VMWP. Now it provides the virtual machine management services from the Windows Server 2008 R2 instance in the parent partition to the guest operating systems in the child partitions. So what exactly does that translate to? Well, it's responsible for the creation, configuration, and running of virtual machines, including pausing and resuming them as well. It saves and restores virtual machines, and it even is responsible for taking snapshots of a virtual machine. So it's a very important process indeed. Now, the virtual machine management service also spawns a separate worker process for each running virtual machine that we have. So next we come to the Virtual Machine Management Service. Now this service is responsible for managing the state of all virtual machines in the child partitions. And it doesn't matter if those virtual machines are active or stopped or even offline. It also handles the creation of snapshots and managing the addition or the removal of devices. As I mentioned before, whenever a virtual machine is started, the VM service 
is also responsible for creating a corresponding virtual machine worker process. So finally we see the WMI provider. Now the WMI provider simply exposes a set of WMI based APIs for managing and controlling your virtual machines. You can use Hyper-V WMI APIs with Windows PowerShell from the command line directly or you can script them if you like. So that's it for today's video. If you're looking for any additional videos or posters, head on over to my blog The Poster Guy at on TechNet and you can find links there to all the latest information. Speaking of the posters, there's a couple of new ones you might want to be aware of. The Remote Desktop Service Component Architecture poster is out, and that discusses Hyper-V and Remote Desktop Services with respect to VDI. And the Exchange Server team have made available the new 2010 Component Architecture poster, so you might want to download that as well. Thanks very much for being with us today and for your time. I hope it's been valuable for you. Any feedback at any time, just email us at virtua at microsoft.com.